This is the initial installation of multiple in the subject matter of NIRs, which stands for near infrared. The difference of near infrared, mid and far in the invisible electromagnetic radiation spectrum is based upon wavelength. Near infrared occupies 0.7 to 1.4 micrometers. Mid infrared sits between 1.4 and 3 micrometers, whereas far infrared is 3 to 1,000 micrometers. Only one of these of this spectrum can produce what we call PBM or known as photobiomodulation, which I'll explain in a minute. Near infrared falls into the category of an LLT or low level light therapy. NIR or near infrared can penetrate the skin from a few millimeters up to a hundred millimeters, which is four inches. Less, by the way, than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is power, does not heat tissue and therefore does not cut the tissue like a laser. At 3,000 nanometers or the far infrared zone that we discussed a moment ago, light is picked up by the water in your skin and it creates heat and it makes you sweat. It's not called far infrared because it goes deep in the depth. It's called far infrared because the far end of the spectrum. Irradiance, which is extremely important to understand, is the amount of light or distance that gives you the power in something we call joules. And you can imagine it to be able to penetrate the skin if you have enough power and thereby create molecular changes as photobiomodulation in the near infrared spectrum spectrum can do. Now we need three things for it to occur simultaneously. They are the amount of irradiance or brightness, the correct wavelength and the distance to the body. And by understanding this, we can look basically at the sun. Solar irradiance is typically around 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared during the day. Now, in the peak solar area, that goes up to 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And you should be aware that 40% of sunlight spectrum is near infrared for good reason. So think about if there was a bed of lights encompassing a bed, of course, of the correct wavelength, the right amount of the LEDs, it probably could accomplish this particular task. So with 38,880 LEDs, this type of array can accomplish that irradiance of the peak solar irradiance of the 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Therefore, yes, we can reproduce what the sun can do. Now, the physiologic changes expected to occur include improved microcirculation, tissue regeneration. We'll talk about these and others on the next installment, but particularly mitochondrial enhanced production, that powerhouse in each cell that makes that energy we call ATP or adenosine triphosphate is gonna be reviewed heavily that you understand this perfectly. Stay tuned for an in-depth talk about near infrared and the difference in the world it will make for optimal health goals. I'm Dr. Mitch Gett. Thank you for watching.